Every time we speak from a spirit of fear, we are declaring the worst case scenario, even though we don't know. See, this is fear. Fear is not always fright. Fear is not always this feeling of panic like we think. Fear is, it's over. Fear is, I guess the famine won. Fear is, I tried and failed. Fear is, I guess this is my last meal. Fear doesn't feel like what you think it's going to feel like. Now, I know this because uh, since I planted our church six years ago, I've had three panic attacks. Now, I didn't have panic attacks before I planted the church. Before I planted the church, I was an evangelist. I preached, I traveled, and I lived in Newport Beach, California. Amen. It was just, you don't have panic attacks in Newport Beach. You just, everybody's a Christian. The dolphins are saved. You go see them out swimming, speaking in tongues. You know, I mean, it's like, it's anointed. Everybody's smiling, or at least has enough Botox. It looks like they're smiling. You know that? Everybody's happy. Everybody's got tan. Life was good. And then I moved to Sin City. And I planted this church. And I thought I was having a heart attack. Three times I thought I was having a heart attack. I'd go into the emergency room. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm good. I just need a, I just need a sign in. Sir, what's wrong? Oh, I'm, I'm dying. I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> Man, they freak out. They get you to the front of the line. I mean, it goes into code red. By the way, if you ever want to get to the front of an ER. No, never mind. Don't do that. But <laughs> I was just telling you, I... I mean, they get you, I mean, it's like, it's 20 minutes of mayhem. They're taking blood. They're putting little electrical things all over. I mean, it's, they're freaking out for 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. <laughs> and there I am just sitting there in a, in a gown <laughs> for an hour in a cold room. The breeze is <laughs> blowing in places I didn't know I had. And, <laughs> and the doctor walks in. Mr. Chavis, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is you are not having a heart attack. The bad news is you're having a panic attack. You're depressed. I said, number one, I am having a heart attack. I, I, feel, I feel like a, like an elephant is on my chest. I, 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 can, I can feel my heart. I, I can't breathe. I know. He goes, no, you're having a panic attack. All the numbers are good. You're having a panic attack. And it, it felt like... I was dying, but really, I was just so fearful of my future that I told myself this must be it, but I've come to declare to somebody at Elevation Church today, it's not over. This is not your last meal. This is not the end of the road for you. This is not how it ends. This is not your last year. This is not how it ends for you. God is still writing your story. Oh, can I get a good amen in the house of the Lord? See, fear lies. Fear lies to you. And fear assumes and declares the worst case scenario. Fear tries to predict my tomorrow by the challenges of yesterday. She judged her future by the drought that she's been in. And she cursed her tomorrow based off of the pain of her past. I understand there's challenges in this room. I understand there's pain in this room. I understand there are very hard seasons in this room, in every room, people watching all over the world, and you're going, but you don't know what I'm, what I'm going through. But I want to declare a truth over you. Your past is not your prophecy. Oh, I felt that in my sanctified soul. Just because it's been one way doesn't mean it will always be that way. Just because I've been in a season doesn't mean that season lasts. Every season changes. The storm can't last forever. Eventually, God will make it rain again. Eventually, the drought ends. Eventually, things can change. Your past is not your prophecy. It is not my prediction. It is a real part of my story, but it's not the end of my story. 
it's a chapter in my book, but it's not the final chapter of my book. So let me, let me tell you something about, about the enemy of your soul. Let me tell you something about the devil. The devil is a, is a present devil. Let, let me say it like this. He is. He roams around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. He is. He is. He, he's, he's present. Um, this is radically different than the God that you serve. They're not in some crazy cosmic battle. They're not arm wrestling for your soul. Don't, don't worry about it. Because, because God is radically different. Uh, God is everywhere. Oh, uh, God was. <laughs> Do I have a scholar in the house? And he, and he is, and he is to come which means that God is in your past, God is working in your future, and God, God is preparing you in your present. God is all places at once. Paul said about Jesus that he feels time and space, that he's, he's here and he's there and he's everywhere all at the same time. This is good news because, see, when the enemy speaks to you, he can only speak to you in your present. I'm going somewhere. He doesn't know your future. He speaks to you in your today, and he lies to you about tomorrow, and he hopes you believe it. But his guess is as good as yours. So he whispers in the woman's ear, this is your last meal. You're going to die. She goes, this is my last meal. I'm going to die. He don't know that just like she don't know that. This is radically different than God. God establishes the end from the beginning. He starts in your future. He doesn't guess about your tomorrow. Oh, this is good news. This means that when God gives you a promise, he's not guessing. Am I helping anybody right now? He doesn't go, I hope it works out. I got good plans for you. Let's see. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans to give you a hope. Can we get a little rowdy at this first service of the day? I'm talking to somebody, and when God talks to you, he talks to you from your future into your present, and he says, come on over to this side. I've got good plans. I've got a good, and he's not hoping it happens. He knows it'll happen. Oh, this is so different. This is the God you serve. This is, this is the God who gives you promises. This is the God we sing about. He knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, and he's got good plans for you. Jesus talks about a, a spirit in the last days. Um, he, he, he talks about a, a mentality that would fill the earth in the last days. Luke 21 says that the people will be terrified. Uh, how many know that that's just, that's just like the spirit of the world, just scared. Is the world scarier today than it was 100 years ago? I'm not sure, but now we, now we got these little phones. Y'all know what I'm saying? And you wake up in the morning, and you turn them on, and it tells you, that phone tells you the worst. So we're terrified, because 100 years ago, they didn't know there was a tornado in Nebraska and an earthquake in Japan and a, and a war in the Middle East. They didn't know. They were just living their life. But now we have 24-hour access to news. And good news doesn't sell. Only bad news sells. So it's constant bad news. And we are feeding and have become addicted to bad news. We've, come, we've become addicted to concern. We've become addicted to panic. And now we feed on it 24 hours a day. And Jesus said this would be the tone. This would be the spirit. This would be the stronghold. This would be the mentality of the world system. That, that fear would grip us. We would be terrorized, 
terrified. Oh, but there is another spirit for the child of God. I want to declare to you that the opposite of fear is not faith. The opposite of fear is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> because the Spirit of God is not a spirit of fear. But he is power, love, and a sound mind. And there is another spirit for the people of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 17, God says in the last days. See, this is the last day scripture preachers don't preach about, but this is my favorite last day scripture. And by the way, it's the clearest last day scripture in the Bible. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I'm going to pour out my spirit on your sons and your daughters. I've got a plan for your children. I've got a plan for families. I've got a plan for your six-year-old, and I've got a plan for your 16-year-old. I've got a plan for your marriage. I've got a plan for families. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and you will prophesy, and you will see dreams, and you will have visions. And when the Spirit of God comes upon you, he, he removes the fear, he will not allow it in your soul. God can turn it around for you. It's not over. This is not your last meal. I want you to see, I want you to see your future. I want you to see it like God sees it. They, they shall prophesy, he said. Prophecy, that's not, that's not just closing your eyes and speaking in King James English. It's, it's talking like God talks. It's getting a word for your family. It's getting a word for your future. It's getting a word for your business. It's speaking about tomorrow like God speaks about tomorrow. Number two, you have to see your calling. I, I, have, I have instructed, I have commanded a widow there. I have I have commanded a widow there. I have instructed a widow there. Yeah, I don't know if you, if you think about this language, but it feels like, it feels like Elijah is going to walk into the village and, uh, and say, hey, I'm, I'm here. And she's going to go, OMG, it's you. <laughs> You're the guy. I was in prayer, and the Lord talked to me about you. He's, he's given me an instruction. He's given me a commandment. Come on in. I got bread bacon. I, I, got, I got water in the jug. Let's go. Come on, come and eat. God's been talking to me. That's not what happens. He walks into town, and she has no idea who he is. And I think the reason is is because this word instructed isn't the best English word. The better word from the Hebrew language that it was written in is, I have appointed a woman there. I have chosen... For special use, I have anointed a woman there. And she thinks she's going to die, but she's anointed. She's given up on her future, but she's appointed. She has no more hope, but my calling is on her. She thinks it's the end for her and for her family, but she has no idea that my hand is upon her. Some of you are in a very low place right now. Some of you think this must be the end of the road. I've tried everything, but I guess the drought won. No, there's an anointing on your life. There's a calling on your life. You have been chosen for special use, and you don't even know it. Because, see, Elijah had an anointing on his life that she needed. But listen, she had an anointing on her life that he needed. They both had oil. Why are they always asking me to serve in this church? Because you have oil. Why do I got lead an e-group? Because you have oil. Why do you want me serving in the house? Because you got oil. Why are they pushing next-gen ministry? I don't feel like holding a baby. You got oil. 
We need you in the youth ministry. We need, we need you in the children's ministry. We need you serving in a ministry. We need you using your gifts, talent. And I know you're at a low point, but we need you in the house of God because there's actually oil that this house needs. She thought it was over. God was anointing her. Oh, and I've been there. I have been at places where I've been so low, but I said yes to my gift anyway. One time I was was preaching for my friend, and and I preached, I preached, I preached. I I preached pretty good. I got to be honest. I don't like all my sermons. I like that one. And uh, I was in a low place. I didn't want to be there. I wanted to cancel, but I preached. And we got off off the stage, and we went to dinner, and my friend looked at me and said, boy, you must be going through it. I said, say less. I said, no. I said, what? I said, what? Why must I be going through it? He goes, because you preach good. He said, you preach like you were dying. You preach, you preach like this was your last sermon. You preach like you were giving it your all. I said, I am going through it. And I'm so grateful that even in my lowest moments, I've got oil on my life. There's a gift on my life, and there's a gift on your life. And we need you right now. It is not time to quit. It's not time to leave. It's not time for you to die. God's oil is on your... Come on, somebody shout, I'm anointed. Come on, slap somebody a high five. Tell them you're anointed. They needed each other's anointing to be sustained through the drought. I've I've appointed. It was almost like God knew that if she got in the atmosphere of the prophetic. Sorry, my Pentecostal just showed. I tried to keep it. I I know I'm at elevation. I'm trying to behave right now. That organ doesn't help. It's like he knew that if she could just get in the atmosphere of the prophet, something would come up. This is why I try not never to miss church. Whether I'm in whether I'm in person, whether I have to be online, whether I'm traveling, I just try to be in the house of God. Because you never know. You never know when God's gonna drop. You never know when your appointing and your anointing is gonna rise up. And you go, that's that's for me. I'm going to make it. I got a calling. I, I remember 2016 sitting right over. The, this is the anointed section. If, there, if, the, if the rapture happens, you go first, because that's where I was sitting, right here with this woman pointing at me. That's where I was sitting. And I was at Inside Elevation. I was sitting right there, and they were doing a conference for pastors. And it was there that I got the green light from heaven to plant my church. It was there that God said, don't plant an elevation church. Don't, don't try to be like Pastor Stephen. Be you. Go plant that church. Go do what's, it was there that I got permission. It was there that God said yes to my dream. I'm just telling, you never know when you come, well, there's going to be a lot of people and there's going to be a lot of crowds and I don't know, and there's a night of worship. I'm going to have to wait in line. Wait in line. (laughs) Bring a bottle of water. Bring a protein bar. Bring a banana. Get to the the house of God because you just never know. And by the way, some of you are like, when you, when you really don't want to come to church, that's when you need to come to church. My best sermons are the sermons I don't want to preach. <laughs> and my most powerful encounters with God in the house of God is when I, when I didn't want to go, but I chose to get into his presence and that appointing rose up. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Elevation Plus. We consider you part of our EFAM, which is our online family. That's right, so make sure you are liking, subscribing, sharing Elevation Plus, and come back here so you can find out more about great stories, great creative elements, and also join us every week for Coffee Fam. That's right.